Church, it is a big privilege for me to bring the word today. It always is a privilege to speak to your hearts. And I, I, I want you to know that I never take it for granted. I never take it for granted. It is a special opportunity um, yeah, that God speaks, right? And I trust that you will receive the word for today. Today is more going to be just um, speaking out of my heart, um, not really in-depth word teaching, uh, just speaking from a place of experience and sharing with you some of my observations and some of my reflections after my pilgrimage walk that I had the privilege to do a couple of days ago. And um, yeah, it is amazing how a person feels refreshed and revitalized and oh, just at peace, even if you have walked 130 k's, because when you retreat with the Lord, it is very special time. And uh, I had an opportunity to walk um, the first section of the Cape Camino, um, which is called the Wineland section. It is from Wellington to Tilbach. And like I said, over seven days, 130 Ks, 181,500 steps. Yes, that was what it was. Um, so after a long hibernation, um, this was my plan as to how to get fit in seven days. And um, I think I have now warmed, warmed up a little bit. Um, but before we go into the word of the day, I just want to encourage you to retreat with the Lord. If you haven't got in your spiritual discipline to retreat, I want to really recommend that. You know that feeling where you sometimes feel some, something is missing or your cup is, cup is a bit empty and you don't know how to fill it and or you feel something is wrong but you don't know how to fix it or you just feel tired and worn out? then it is time to book your retreat. You don't have to spend seven days or walk 130 k's. You can just do a bicycle trip or a hike with the Lord or you can just walk around the block. But book time with the Lord, that uninterrupted place where you can have and spend time conversing with Him. It is special and um, like his word says in Psalm 23, 3, he refreshes and restores my life. And when we retreat with him, that is exactly what happens. He refreshes and restores our souls. Um, so also we quote this um, often at the retreats, at the Be Still retreats, Matthew eleven twenty eight that says, come to me, all who, are la who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. But for your soul to be refreshed and for you to be put at ease, you have to come away. Come to me. Come away with me. Jesus retreated with Father often. So, Book your retreat with the Lord, at least the annual retreat. Are you ready for the word? Okay, we're going to go into the word. Um, I just want to start by saying the walk was not a Beth's idea. <laughs> the walk for me was really and truly an act of obedience. Um, a word came to me that um, at the, it must have been about in mid-February and um, a lady send a word to me and she said, God is putting everything in place for a wine lens be still. And that was the word. And so what do we do if a word like that comes to us? Um, it can be a prophetic word. It can be an illuminated scripture. It can be under the unction of the Holy Spirit. It can be whilst worshiping that certain things are just revealed in your spirit to you. So what do we do with the word that we receive? Well, I think Hannes has really adequately explained it in the, in the Sermon of the Seed, where we just plant it in the good soil, in the bedding of our hearts, and we water it and we nurture it, and we wait for Father's appointed time. Because he, the word says, he watches over his word. He will watch over that word. And he will appoint, like Vilti said, he is... Um, in control of times and seasons, and he will uh, show the appointed time. But when the appointed time happens, and you get that prompting from, Ho from Holy Spirit, we co-labor with that word. And he often reminds you of that word when it is in season. He would remind you of that word that he has um, sent before you. 
And so what happened is that I was um, sitting in front of my PC, and um, it was about in July, so substantial time has passed since I got the word. And obviously I knew that maybe sometime this year I would have to visit um, Cape Town to go and look for venues maybe. God will say who needs to go with, who will invite, who needs to be part of that. But I left it there. And um, so in July I get this email in my, in my inbox that says it was an adver advertisement to come and walk the Cape Camino. But for the first time I, I saw that the first section is called the Winelands section. And you know that feeling when you, like, it just hits you. And you're like, oh, no, Lord, this is crazy. I'm, I'm sure it can't be. And I, I, I sat down. I'm like, I think I just got mail. And I'm like, Lord, but then you have to confirm. Because really now this is totally out of my comfort or what I have planned to do. And, um, yeah, the, the date was somewhere in August. And I said, Lord, okay, if this is you, please, I have to get confirmation. So I asked the Lord for full confirmation. So I asked the Lord for my family to release me um, because my mother-in-law and Vilti, it was, it was the children's uh, test week in school. So um, they had to release me. And secondly, I asked for the Lord to make available the funds. because I didn't have gear. It's Cape Town flight tickets. It's quite the expensive exercise. And I asked the Lord for a business meeting that needed to, to be moved. It's one of those meetings. I'm not the organizer, but I have to be present. So I said, Lord, if that meeting is moved, I thought I'll make it a bit tough, you know, for the Lord. And then also, um, yeah, I asked for him for, I said to him, I don't want to go and walk alone. I just don't want to walk alone. If just one other person can walk with me. Well, you know what? In less than 10 days, Vilti and the children got so excited, they cheered me on. God made the funds available. The meeting was moved. And two other people responded to the call to, to walk the whole route. Um, and one of my best friends, she said she will join us for the last three days. And then to top it all, I went for a biblical massage at Hilda, bless her hands and her soul, and after that, she said, you know what? The Lord is really putting on my heart to tell you he's giving you new hiking boots. I was like, okay. So the next day, that was that. Me and Vilti set off to the shops. We bought the hiking boots. We booked the, the plane tickets, and um, we confirmed the trip. And there I went off. And so on the first evening when we got, uh, I got together with uh, Sarita and with Cindy, which is the two ladies that walked the route with me, we exchanged expectations, and we sat and we said, okay, so um, what, are we, what are you expecting of this journey, of these seven days, and why do we think we're here? And so they shared amazing testimonies of their own confirmation as to why they, they knew they had to be there. But also they trusted the Lord for emotional release and of... Um, yeah, I want to say emotional release in very different but similar ways and uh, very significant reasons for them to do the walk. As for me, I was like, I don't know. This is an act of obedience. I got the word. I follow, I'm following the word. I don't know. I don't know what my expectation is supposed to be. And then the joke is, the next morning, I get my first um, prayer and word of encouragement from my husband and his, his words are Bets I want you to know that I'm praying that you have a massive expectation about this journey he says because God's word is too weighty on our lives to be mediocre about your expectation so I'm like okay this is like two worlds apart from having none to having massive and so on that first evening, I just retreated with the Lord. I said, Lord, really, um, I went to the word because I know this um, scripture, know it well, Psalm 62 verse 5, that says, my soul wait only upon God and silently submit to him. For my hope and expectation are from him. And then I said, Lord, your hope and my expectation is from you. 
So help me to know then what this is all about. And I immediately felt the Lord speaking to my spirit and said, read Psalm 119. Now that makes sense, I suppose, because it's the longest psalm in the word. And I mean, I've got time. So I thought, okay, let me start and read that word. But, oh, it blessed me. It blessed me so. And I, my prayer is really that I hope that it blesses you too today. So before we go into the words, I have an ear to hear. I have an eye to see. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word in my heart. Your word is welcome in my heart. Amen. Amen. You can open your word. I'm going to read for us in the Amplified Psalm 119, the first six verses. Just going to give you a moment to get there. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Version for those who are looking online. Blessed, happy, fortunate, to be envied are the undefiled, the upright, the truly sincere, and the blameless in the way, who walk, who order their conduct and conversation in the law of the Lord. That is the whole of God's revealed will. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are they who keep his testimonies and who seek, inquire for, and of him, and crave him, With their whole heart. Yes, they do no unrighteousness. No willful wandering from his precepts. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts. That we should observe them diligently. Oh, that my ways are directed and established to observe your statutes. Hearing, receiving, loving and obeying them. Verse 6. Then shall I not be put to shame by failing to inherit our promises. By failing to inherit your promises. When I respect, when I have respect to all of your commandments. Amen. Amen. We're going to unpack the word. But right there, right there, I got my expectation. Where God whispered in my ear, he said, Bets, a good expectation for you to have is to walk in my revealed will for your life. I'm going to say it again. A good expectation to have is to walk in my revealed will for your life. It blessed me. I did share last week just in the announcements that we had a meditative scripture, which was Psalm 16. And Psalm 16 says it so beautifully in verse 11. It says, you will show me the path of life and in your presence there's fullness of joy. There's no fullness of joy without his presence. There will be glimpses of it maybe. But fullness of joy is in his presence. And he shows us the path of life. So the first thing that I want you to underline and or to pay attention to is in verse 1. That says, blessed, happy, fortunate are those who walk. Who walk. Now we know that there are seasons that we sit with the Lord like Mary and we sit at his feet and we receive from him. But by definition, I'm also saying that when you walk, it means that you got up. You got up to walk, right? And when the enemy and all life and all circumstance knocked you down, this is what we do as children of God. We get up. We get up. I saw in those two ladies, their feet were clothed with blisters to the point where they didn't have skin on some patches of their feet. But they got up by his grace. I saw how they went through emotional turmoil and heartfelt pain, but they got up. I saw how they got their determination and their perseverance in him. They got up. And this is what the word says. As we as children it doesn't, of God, it doesn't matter how many times we fall, we rise again with him. Amen. We get up. Province 
Proverbs uh, 24, 16 says, For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. It says the wicked are overthrown by calamity, not us as children of God. We get up. You know that um, it also reminds me of the man at the bath of Bethesda, which was laying there for 38 years because he couldn't get into the pool. You know the words that Jesus asked him when Jesus came to him? He said, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? What Jesus said then? He said, get up. Pick up your bed and walk. Do you want to get well? Get up. Get up. In Jesus' name. Also, Psalm 37 verse 23, you know this, 23, 24. The steps of a good man are directed and established by the Lord when he delights in his ways. And he, God, busies himself with every step. Though he may fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord grasps his hand and support and upholds him. The Lord busies himself with every detail of your step. And even though you stumble, he will not let you be utterly cast down. Now, when we walked, there was a chaperone. Now, the only role of the chaperone is to show the way and also to pace the walk. You know, otherwise, I don't know, I'll probably arrive at evening because I love those little tea breaks, you know, en route. But you get a chaperone that shows you the pace. And Holy Spirit is our ultimate chaperone, right? He shows us the way, points the way, reveals the way. And then he helps us to keep in step with the word, with Jesus and with Father God. And we need to learn to walk with God habitually, like the saints of old. There's many of them, but it's so beautiful to me when we start looking at, like for instance, Enoch, right? In Genesis 5.22, the word says, Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God, habitual, continuous conversation with God. Verse 24, and Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God, and he was not. For God took him home with him. Can you imagine chatting with the Lord and then the next moment you are in heaven for real? I think that's the way to go. And the same with Noah. The same was said about Noah. Noah, Genesis um, 6 verse 9. This is the history of the generations of Noah. Noah was a just and righteous man, blameless in his evil generation. Noah walked in habitual fellowship with God. Let that be our portion. Amen? Amen. This is what is said about Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis 48, 15. And Jacob blessed Joseph and said to him, God himself, before whom my fathers Abram and Isaac lived and walked habitually, God himself has been my shepherd and has led me and fed me from the time that I came into being until this day. They walked with God. And he led them and he fed them. And this is what it means when the word says blessed, happy, fortunate, to be envied. Blessed is not to lack. Not to lack in every area of your life. Not in health, not in relationship, not in finance, not in fulfillment. It's not to lack. The word says the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want or lack. That is what it means to be blessed. And this is what Jacob said, God led me and fed me to this day. Amen? Amen. And it is for those who walk with the Lord. Now, the next thing I want you to underline and or pay attention to is the scripture says, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are those who walk, who conduct and conversation in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is then explained in the Amplified. It says the whole of God's revealed will. The whole of God's revealed will. Amen. So we know that theologians um, say that we get the hidden will of God and we get the revealed will of God. It is the glory for God to hide a thing, but it's the glory of kings to seek it out. Look, listen to this beautiful scripture, Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, 
but the things which are revealed belongs to us and to our children forever. That we may do all of the words of his law. So God wants to reveal the special, the hidden, the treasured things to us. And it is our glory to seek it out. And what is revealed belongs to us and belongs to our children. It is our portion. It is our heritage, right? Also in the parable of the sower in Mark 4 verse 11, this is what the word says. And Jesus said to them, to you has been entrusted the mystery of the kingdom of God, that is, the secret counsels of God, which are hidden from the ungodly. So it's not for everybody to find. It is for those who seek. It is for those that walk with God. It is for those that have habitual conversation with God. It's for those. In the Passion, it says it beautiful. The privilege of intimate knowing the mystery of the God's kingdom has been granted to you, but not to others. And then this week, I received a blog. I hear his whisper. I love the blog. Volte also often forwards it to me. This is what it reads. I'm going to say to you. It's, the heading was, I reveal my mysteries. Why are you doubting, my child? Why have you entertained the lie that because I am cloaked in mystery, I must not want to share my secrets with you? Trust me in all your ways. I long for you to dive into the, the, the depths of my truth and seek me for greater understanding. That kind of understanding is deeper than your mind can interpret, much wilder and holier than you can imagine or can envisage. As you seek my wisdom, my mysterious ways will open before your eyes. Many have seen my miracles, but never learned my mysteries. Many have seen my miracles, but not experienced and learned my mysteries. Miracles and mysteries will be revealed as you keep your heart before me. Dear child, I am a father who will never fail you. I will instruct you in the ways you should go. You will hear my voice of my spirit giving you the secret of my ways. By my sight, you will hear my whisper, my words of life that will make you strong and pure. I am the one who leads you. I will never fail you. And this is what Psalm 119 is also saying. So when we walk in the ways of the Lord, you will hear his whispers and you will start walking in his revealed will. And it will not disappoint us since we will inherit the promises that he makes. So how precious is his word, right? And this is what I want to say is like, just like Hansel and Gretel, remember how they left the breadcrumbs so that they can be found? God leaves pieces of his revealed will and word for us so that he can be found. And the scripture says that one of the most precious treasures that we will have or we discover in the word is his voice. Is his voice. Because man shall not live from bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from father's mouth. Amen. So we have to ask Holy Spirit constantly to show us the next bread crumb. The next piece of revealed will of father's purpose and will for our, for our lives. And then when the prompting comes, when the unction of the Spirit comes, we have to follow that in obedience. I mean, it would have been odd if I said, no, Lord, another three confirmations, please. Because when that confirmation comes, you've got to follow that. And now I want to just have you touch your ear again. I have an ear to hear. I want you to listen to these words now. I'm going to speak. Obedience to his word and the prompting of the Spirit becomes stepping stones to our destiny. Obedience to His Word, to His revealed will for your life, and the prompting of the Spirit who shows you becomes stepping stones to your destiny. We'll get back to that, but Holy Spirit's role is to always reveal the Word. The word has a name, eh? Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word has a name, living word. 
Holy Spirit's role is always to reveal the word to us. And the word is active. Make it active. So the word says that true worshipers will worship him in spirit and truth. And again, truth has a name. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So true worshipers worship him in spirit and truth or spirit and word. I'm going to share this with you. In 2015, I had a supernatural experience. Um, I only afterwards realized that it was an angel. At the time, I didn't know. I thought it was the Lord himself. But I was sleeping. Vilti was away. And the children were sleeping with me on the bed. And whilst I was sleeping, all of a sudden, it was as if someone put on the light in my room. Because I could see my whole room exactly as it is. And I still went like this to see if my eyes are closed. Because I could see my whole, whole room. And it lit up. And immediately the presence was so overwhelming. It was like very sharp pins and needles on my whole body. And I immediately said, just said, yes, Lord. It's, it's all I said is, yes, Lord. And then I heard a note on the piano. Our piano is on our second, on, just outside of my bedroom. And I heard a note on the piano and I saw a sword. It's so tangible that I can touch it. I said, my response was, is it a sword, Lord? And again, the note and the sword. And then I started, listen, I had a list to intercede. I started interceding with the children. I'm like, I'm going to have this whole conversation going. But then it was gone. As, as soon as it came, it went. It was just a message from an angel. Showed me the sword. And of course, I interceded till daybreak and... Um, the Lord showed me, it was amazing to me, because in Ephesians, when you look at the sword, no? Ephesians 6 verse 17, it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So we know the sword is the Word of God. But it reads, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So it is the Spirit and the Word. The two-edged, double-edged sword, the Spirit and the Word. And God said to me, we were in a very difficult situation at that time. It, the battle was real um, in, in our life. And the Lord said to me, you will overcome all things by the spirit and the word. But you need the spirit to reveal the word. Okay? So I have learned to really treasure the word of God. And we know that... We will overcome by the spirit and the word. The word is the living word, like I said, Jesus himself. It is the written word and it is the spoken word of Father. And so my question to us all is how much value do you place on God's word? Do you treasure that? This same psalm, if you just turn the page, it says in verse 11, your word I have laid up in my heart. In the Passion Translations, it says so beautiful, I consider your word to be my greatest treasure. Let us go to um, Psalm 19. 19, by the way, we're doing Psalm 19 and Psalm 119. 19, biblically and prophetically, means worship. Those who worship him, true worshipers, will worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us read Psalm 19 from verse 7. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the whole person. Do you hear that? The word of the Lord is perfect, restoring the whole person. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and bright, enlightening the eyes. The reverent fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Verse 10. More to be desired are they than gold. Even much, even than much fine gold. They are sweeter also than honey and drippings from the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, reminded, illuminated and instructed. And in keeping them is great reward. Great reward. 
Now, I have, we have, um, I've, I've given a sermon on the, the joy of obedience, right? But what I've just tangibly experienced again on this walk is how there is great reward when you follow that word. When you follow it, even if you don't understand it fully, God reveals, and he reveals en route and in the journey. But for me, the word speaks about some of these rewards or benefits of obedience. For me, it is, in the first place, it says it keeps us safe. So even though I don't know where I'm going, who's going to meet me there, how I'm going to get what, what, I know that I am safe because the word of the Lord has gone before me. And the word says in Leviticus 25 verse 18, therefore you shall do and give effect to my statutes and keep my ordinances and perform them and you will dwell in the land in safety. Amen. Jeremiah 723, but this thing I commanded them, listen to, obey to my voice, and I will be your God, and you will be my people, and walk in the whole way that I command you, that it will be well with you. It will be well with you, and you will be safe when you follow the word, okay? It gave me a great sense of adventure, because I don't know where we're going, but we're going. So it was to me like a big treasure hunt. And um, yeah, just to see how beautiful his work is. And just to behold the beauty of his work. This um, Psalm 119 also says it, I think it is in verse 2, that he says, blessed are those who keep his testimonies. To keep his testimony, it's his, it's his work. But you get to behold it and to keep and to be able to come and testify about the greatness of, of who he is. So for me, a benefit of obedience is really that sense of adventure and also a deeper sense of God's presence. Like we said in Psalm 16 verse 11 that says, the pre in your presence is the fullness of joy. And we get that deeper sense of presence when we just follow his word. Also, we gain wisdom and understanding. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 7 it says, but rather we are setting forth but rather what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God, once hidden from human understanding and now revealed to us by God. That wisdom which God devised and decreased before the ages of our glorification to lift us into the glory of his presence. So God reveals en route, like I said. To me, it blessed me so because Liesl actually shared with me. She said, um, you know the wisdom that Solomon asked for? The wisdom. It actually means in its root, a listening ear. So Solomon actually asked the Lord for a listening ear so that we can hear him. Because if we hear him, we can follow him. That can lead us to purpose and destiny. Amen. And then for me, just uh, the last one I want to say, the benefit of obedience is that you will possess the land and have a long life. In Deuteronomy 5 Verse 33, it reads, you shall walk in the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and it may be well with you again, and that you may live a long life in the land which you shall possess. Amen. Amen. Live a long life and possess. Hmm? Vilti spoke about possessing. So I just want to say, obedience is... Really following the word, that is really the stepping stones to our destiny. And destiny, what is destiny? What is destiny? Now, I, I dare to say that, okay, let's, let's, first, let's first read what is the definition of the dictionary. Okay, the dictionary says, a person's destiny is everything that happens to them during their life, also including what will happen in the future, especially when it is considered to be controlled by someone or something else. Synonyms of fortune, lot, or portion. Now, the word teaches us about real destiny, Okay? Because, remember Psalm 16 also said, Lord, you are my cup, you are my portion, you are my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Hmm? So destiny is linked to predestined. Hmm? It's what God has foreordained from the onset. The word speaks 
of this in many places. For instance, in Romans 11, 2, it says, No, God has not rejected and disowned his people, whose destiny had marked out and appointed and foreknew from the beginning. So, I want to say, if you do not walk in God's revealed will for your life, you will not find your destiny. Because destiny is what is predestined by God for your life. Okay? You may be having a good life. You might only be existing. But you will not hit the mark in terms of destiny. Because destiny is his revealed will for your life and walking in that continually. And that this is my heart's desire for us all. That we will find our destiny in him. And that we will walk continually towards that. I'm going to close. I'm going to close. With him, we know all stumbling blocks become stepping stones, right? All stumbling blocks. Nothing is higher than the name of Jesus. So everything, every circumstance, every difficult situation, under his feet. It only becomes stum Any stumbling block becomes a stepping stone for us that believe, right? And stepping stones are like those breadcrumbs. It is pieces of his word, illuminated word, that God leaves for us so that he can be found. And when we seek out that illuminated word, and we follow the unction of the spirit, showing it to us, pointing it to us, it leads us to our destiny, a life worthy of your calling. That is why many are, Everybody is called, but few is chosen. <laughs> because there's not, all of us don't walk in that calling. But treasure it. Treasure it. I have learned in my life, honestly, to value God's word. And I have practiced and I have taken heed to the prompting of the spirit. And often, God has led us to do crazy things. Crazy, crazy things. Ridiculous things. I mean, for instance, like this 130 case. I mean, or like planting this church. It wasn't in my plan. It wasn't my plan for my life. Or to leave full-time employment recently. Or for us to invest in a business that we didn't have money for. God had to provide it. I mean, crazy things. Yet, there is nothing I can honestly say that satisfies, that is so wholesome, that is so joyful, that makes me feel so connected, that makes me feel beloved and safe to know that I'm in his revealed will for my life. There is a grace that follows you. It's like when you are riding in the slipstream of a cyclist. There is a grace when we follow the revealed will for our lives. And so if you ask me now, if I now understand why I had to go and walk the 130 case, without a doubt, I will say yes, yes, yes. Because God showed me in the walking. It is like one morning it was so misty can only see three meters but when you see a shadow the shadow becomes a tree and then when you walk you see another dark patch and when you get close to it it's an open gate and this is how God reveals is in the walking and I got to behold the beauty of his work and and keep his testimonies because I saw I saw how he healed emotional wounds in a perfect seven days that was a year's coming. I saw how he has orchestrated a perfect farewell. A farewell celebration for one of his daughters that had to say goodbye and mourn her beloved sister's passing. I could see the mystery and the glory of a moon, a full moon setting and a sun rising over fields and fields of winelands and olive fields and pomegranates 
I could experience the joy of abundance in that acres and acres of yellow canola oil flowers. I could just see the beauty of his hands. I could smell the soil and the fine moss. And it was magnificent to walk with him and listen to his word and worship him in the walking, in the journey. I could see for one of my friends how her heart just melted at the very end when a farmer welcomed us on his stoop with abundance of platter and he was standing right to receive us and she felt as if God himself welcomed her home. I could see how he spoils us with soft serve from nowhere and how good a cup of real cappuccino tastes after seven days. I could experience all of that. And then the first reason, by the way, that he sent us was to go and look for a venue. And then it was so amazing to see how he left us treasures and hints and how it all came together in the end for a perfect Bistol Winelands venue, just by the way. Just by the way. And this is the awesome, wondrous God that we serve magnificent and it just left me again awestruck about glimpses of what we get to see of who he is something that you could not think of dream of more than more than that more than that see he's busy with the work he's busy with the work the work of his hand and when you followed that revealed will you get to be part of it. You get in. And may it be so unto each one of us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to go over to the communion. Lord, I pray over every man and woman watching on the online, Lord, also for everybody represented here, every family, for this congregation, for this community. Thank you, Lord, that we can speak a blessing. Thank you, Lord, that we can just behold the beauty of who you are and the beauty of your hands. Thank you, Lord, that the most precious thing that we discover in the word is your voice. And thank you, Lord, that you lead us continually. Thank you, Lord, that you help us to be wise. You open us for us a hearing ear, Lord, to hear your voice. Thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit reveals to us the secret counsels of your heart of your heart lord and that we will speak the oracles of you thank you lord for your will and your way and your plans lord and thank you lord as we read and follow the word it straightens our bodies our minds our souls it revives us lord it restores us to life with you following you is the path of life lord thank you that fullness of joy is only in your presence Thank you, Lord, that your word is truly a lamp onto our feet. And thank you, Lord, that you help us to obey, to step into destiny, what you have preordained for us. And thank you, Lord, also for this blessing of Psalm 119, verse 6, that says, When we walk in your ways, we shall not be put to shame. By failing to inherit your promises, when we respect and value and follow and absorb, observe your word. Lord, we want to set you continually before us. We want to fix our eyes on you. And thank you, Lord, that we will not miss the mark. Thank you, Lord, as you have given vision and direction for this ministry, Lord, that is up there on the wall on banners, Lord. We speak and we declare that for each person and each family, Lord, there's banners. Jehovah Nisi. And that it is time for the banners to be raised, Lord, over our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you help us to walk in the revealed will that you have predestined. For the banners to be up, Lord. Raise it. Thank you, Lord, that there is awakening in our souls, an awakening 
to your will and your way and your purposes. And thank you, Lord, that you help us to respond, just like the blossoms are blooming, to respond. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.